and, and I'm used to that now. And sometimes, you know, we're black parents. We, 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 you know, black parents, how, how our parents were, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, we'll poke fun like every once now. in a while, but I, I take it seriously that he just does not, he's a logical person. People laugh at like the Sheldon Cooper character on, on Big Bang, but that's exactly how Kilo is sometimes. So that he has his spot. He made the physical therapist who comes to our house move because she was sitting in his spot. That's his spot. That's his thinking spot. That's his eating spot. Yeah, and she got up and moved because that's his spot. You know, he knows why he likes that spot. He knows that he doesn't want anybody else taking that spot. And if he gives you that spot, it means he recognizes and loves you. Like, how I knew that Greg and I would be a good couple together was like, we all went out together that first time because we did a family date instead of just him and I. And kiddo, without prompting, put his hand into Greg's hand. Now, my son does not like being touched. He has had cops try to, like, pat him on the shoulder and certain teachers try to give him a hug. And he will, t- he will slide away. And, I mean, I try to apologize for it because, you know, we were raised not to be rude. But I can yeah. understand he does not like strangers touching him. So then yeah. he did that. When he took his hand without prompting, I knew my child trusts this person. And he is a very good judge on, you know, trust with that. You know, yeah. like the way he talked to you right now, if he didn't want nothing to do with you, he would have been even worse silent. I wouldn't have been able to get anything out of him. He can tell good people. And that's why I tell people all the time. That's why I laugh because he was standing outside the door listening to us that 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 evening when we did the second half and he was just dying to get in here. Oh. You know? <laughs> and a lot of families I'm honored that he wanted to talk to Exactly. I appreciate that. You know, I hopefully am. he'll get to meet the guys as well, too. But, you know, they all doing their own thing. And Lefty, you owe us an explanation. You can't just yes, leave us know. hanging on, you know, what you and I.L. had. You know, you say, getting ready to introduce a new addition to the fam, and then you leave and us I'm hanging. Telling, loser. Yes, I am so <laughs> pissed at that. But we're like a... Are you going to tell us what kind of baby you have? Yes. And we are like a family like this. And and that's why we always talk about kiddo. And I I love that I can bring up stuff about kiddo with you guys that I don't even share with other people because (laughs) you try to, you know, think about it in, in light like that. Like when you ask, you know, how is it to be an autism parent? And there are many joyful moments. Joy triumphs the fuckery, but there's still so much fuckery because people are still trying to push anti-vaccine stuff. When it's been proven that vaccinations have no direct ties to autism, so we have to fight that. We have to fight that we need funding for certain things because schools are still not equipped. In Durham here where I live, you know, even though I live in a little subsection that got incorporated by Durham, we have one woman that goes to every school for IEP stuff. IEP is the wow. exceptional program for children that have special needs. And and I, what I like about Durham is they don't pull kids that have special needs out of the classes anymore. They just have, they don't have like a separate special ed unless they're really, really in need of that. What they do uh-huh. is they put kids with autism in regular classes and they have a special instructor or they take them out in little small fragments for stuff that they need extra help with. But for IEP, which is a very important, it's to bridge the gap between parents and school administrators, they have one person because they don't have the funding to pay more people. And she does it for elementary, middle, and high school. Oh, my goodness. That woman is a soul. Yeah. And it's so ridiculous. And, and people are wondering why I get up in arms about, oh, you need to work with vouchers. Private schools are no better for kids with special needs. That's true. In fact, you're paying them to ostracize your child. Huh. So I, I, I just never thought of it like yeah, that. I just get mad at people who don't think outside their own bubble, who don't use that empathy when it comes to how America functions. I had to step outside because when I was younger, I had that mentality. Well, if I could do it, why can't this person without understanding other people's backgrounds, other people's needs? When you step out of that me bubble and you start seeing that the world is not on an even level, 
that's when you really start to grow in my mind. Yeah, I mean, I believe that too. I mean, you know, once you, my mom always, always used to tell me, um, like when I would get in trouble and I'd come home and I'd always be like, well, this person did this to me. They did this to me. And she would always tell me, you're always thinking about what somebody did to you. What did you do? Yeah. What have you done? What have you done in a situation, good or bad? And I, that's what I try to remember now because it's so true. I understand why she taught me that. She taught me that to force me to think yeah. about my actions and how they affect people. Yep. And how the things that I say or the things that I do or the way that I look, how those things matter to the outside world. Yes. And we, have, we need to be more cognizant of that. We yes. need to be cognizant of, well, what the hell do you what, and I've always said this before, you know, when I say don't say racist shit and you won't be considered a racist, I mean exactly that. Don't say the things that you, that you, don't put that shit out in the atmosphere if you don't expect it to come back. Because exactly. it all does. It does. It all comes back. And, and yes, and America's all, you know, the, the quote unquote bootstrap mentality is all about individualism. And I have, I love the way, um, and particularly Tim Wise explains individualism and uh, the fuckery behind it. I recommend anybody go and look up his explanation on YouTube. It's quite entertaining and very true. Yeah. But um, it, it, it's, it's the idea that you don't need anybody. And that you can't, that you can't depend on people, and you can't expect people to depend on you. Like you were saying, yeah. when you open up your mind and you realize we're all codependent, yep. we all depend on each other. We all need each other, whether it's small or little, whether I know you or I don't know you. Your life affects my life just because you are alive. Yeah. Like that, that, that was one of the things. Like there was this woman. Um, yesterday, and my heart goes out to her. Um, they were having thread. They had this thread where they were asking people to uh, explain, you know, to give a brief understanding of or explanation for why they were uh, worried about this tax bill. Yeah. And this woman's story just. I was I was standing in the elevator almost in tears reading what she wrote i'm gonna in a minute i'm gonna look it up and read it to you but i just wanted to say i wanted to tell her and i wanted to make it known that um she said that her pain issues her pain management issues and with and everything else that's going on she has um several autoimmune diseases that have affected her and has kept her from working and doing other things. And she said, she she came out and said that um, with this with this tax bill and what it does to healthcare and the possibilities of the calamities that she could face, she was willing to self euthanize. And that's sad. She said this on Twitter. She said this on she said this on fucking Twitter. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't. Um, there was nothing about her story that could leave me. And like I said, I'm going to read it to y'all because I want everybody to hear this. But there's nothing about her story that would, would lead me to believe that she was telling a lie. But I had to tell her, I told her, I was like, look, you know, I need you to live. Yeah. Not for any benefit of myself, but I need you to live because you are right. And it is true. We need each other to live. And the idea that we are willing to kill people the idea that we're willing to marginalize people the way that we're doing right now it's 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 a it makes you angry yes. and it infuriates you but it's also depressing to see what our society has become yes. because i remember I, my grandfather mark was really was a big part of um the increasing of wages and the uh, desegregating the steel, steel workers uh, union here in, uh, in Texas. And he was very instrumental 
Mitchell. There's actually a book that a guy wrote a book about him before he passed. But the thing that always got me was he was always willing to work with everyone. He was always willing to understand that the other man's plight may, even though their plight may be different from his, it was still legitimate. It was still something that mattered. And we don't, we don't take that into consideration now. We don't, you know, I know we we talk about Trump voters and things like that. And, but I want, the other thing I think people should realize is that when we talk about Trump voters, we talk about them because we feel like they're voting against their own best interests. They're doing things to help them meet their demise that quicker. They're doing things that are, are short-sighted. Yeah, that are short-sighted. And it just what when she when she said when I read that I mean I was like this woman is telling is telling the world that she is willing to kill herself that things are that bad in her life that her health care is that much of a necessity and it is for so many people yeah. but that what is happening and what they are doing what this government is doing. Is pushing her to the point where she has to actually consider. I mean, how fucked up is that? Yeah. That somebody has to actually sit and think and consider and be honest about the fact that they might be willing to kill themselves just so that their families won't be burdened. It's not on. It's not because she's being selfish. No. It's not that she's. I'm gonna find it while I'm talking. But yeah. it's the fact that this woman is more concerned about what will happen to her family because of all of these restraints, all of these new, um, let me see, hold New on. loopholes. And, and yeah. the worst part about the tax bill is it's not just about taxes. They snuck in a lax gun measure. They snuck in an attack on our reproductive rights. They snuck in that... that re- Basically, they're going to mess up Obamacare come hell or high water, which affects that woman. And, and, and yes. they did it all under the, the guise of this will regulate the taxes for wealthy. Yeah, it'll get them more money. They won't have to pay in the state tax. So that's more money you're denying our economy for their coffers. That's true. And, and, and who gets affected? People like that woman, people like me, who <clears throat> I'm going to have to, after his insurance expires, if I can't find an affordable insurance, figure out how I'm going to handle teaching him speech and physical therapy and everything else. Because those things cost money. People can't do that for free. They've got families to take care of, too. You know? Okay. Let me, uh, I, I found it. Yeah. And so this is from, the tweet was from Nick Nutson. Yeah. But he, what he asked people to do, he said, please RT in solidarity with the millions of Americans who will suffer at the hands of the GOP and their evil hashtag tax scam. Bankruptcy, sickness, death. It's not hyperbole. It will happen if this bill will affect you. Leave your story and reply. And so here's her story. Her uh, her name is LCB22. Yeah. She said, my story is long. I'll try to be brief. Just when the recession hit, 2006, or, I was diagnosed with five autoimmune diseases after suffering effects from undiagnosed Lyme in childhood, which destroyed much of my aut- autonomic nervous system. I take a lot of med- medications and they are very expensive. Yeah. Chemo, very expensive chemo infusion. Uh, I have not been able to change healthcare plans because I couldn't get, gar- get a guarantee that the insurance company would cover that life-saving treatment. My insurance alone has crept up to two, $26,000 Per year, mm-hmm. we have struggled in New Jersey to recover from the recession, largely because of my illness expenses. My family has had to declare bankruptcy, and our home has was unnecessarily foreclosed on. Said well in parentheses Wells Fargo, 
Yep. Isn't that interesting? That sounds like something we've all heard. Yep. Anyway, <clears throat> unnecessarily foreclosed on, and we now live with my adult son. We cannot afford $36,000 a year for my life-saving infusion alone. So if this tax bill passes, that's it. I'm unable to work since 2006 and never took disability. I was too proud. Thought I would recover enough. I turned 65 this year, and the little relief we thought we'd get would go away if Medicare is, will go away if Medicare is defunded, not to mention Social Security. Bottom line is, I will not let my family suffer anymore on my account. I will self-euthanize before I let them ruin their lives for me. Mm -hmm. I am not joking, and they do not know my plans. This tax bill is literally life and death for me. And that's heartbreaking. Yeah. And, and people don't realize how many Americans are suffering right now. I My mom had to move in with us because between what she pays for medicine and doctor visits, there's no way she can afford to live on her own. And, and it's I, sad. I just, I, it just, it just, it it breaks your heart. It is. I, yeah. I mean, what, what do you say? How do you explain that? You know, how do you, how do you, how do you go to sleep knowing that people are living like this? And it not occur to you that, hey, maybe I shouldn't fuck over these people. Well, they, I mean, you got so many people who live in the bubble, literally. You know, you got Meghan McCain getting mad because people have literally come out against a father who is not. He has a brain tumor, yes. But he is getting taxpayer-funded health care that makes sure that he gets the best doctors, the best services. He is taking care of while this woman's family is bankrupting itself for her. So when she gets mad because people are calling out her dad, who said not even a couple of years ago the Bush tax plan was too detrimental to average Americans to stand by this, when he knows that if he dies, his family's going to be taken care of, no matter what, is so hypocritical. And that's because people refuse to think outside their bubble, outside what keeps them set and what keeps them yeah. comfort. That's why I said empathy needs to be the focus people have. Because when you're empathetic, when you understand that it doesn't have to directly affect me or under, I don't have to directly understand it to know that it's real, to know that it's happening, it opens up your mind and it helps yeah. you help the society with, with all these ills that we keep holding on to. I mean, because that... I, it just it, breaks it, your heart. It, it's a punch. It is literally a punch in the chest yeah. to know that someone is willing to kill themselves to to keep from being a burden. Yes. I mean, you know, I can't... I'm, I'm not... I don't want to sound callous and I don't want to uh, delegitimize suicide because that's a real thing. But there's just something that gets me, you know, about the fact that all because of health care issues, she's willing to die. Yeah. I mean, but that is just sad part let that shit sink in. Yeah. Let that, let that sink in. The sad health part? Care. Yeah. yeah. Health care. She, the, the thought of being a burden only because of her health has her at the point where she can consider killing herself. Yeah. And, and the sad part is we elect these people to be our representatives and they don't even look at her story when they make these decisions. They don't care. And that's why I said we have to start focusing on who we're putting in as our voice. Because yeah. if this woman had a real voice in D.C., this bill went in the past. No. Because no. anybody who just heard that story that isn't feeling like shit right now, that yeah. there's something wrong with you. How yeah. can you not feel her pain empathetically, knowing that she feels that her life is detrimental to her family because they have to shell out their finances to keep her alive? 
and that she is willing to relieve them of that burden because she feels like a burden to them instead of somebody that they, that they love and care about. But that's how tough it is because people are struggling with this. And it, it just really makes me angry. And that's why I say I'm not going to be apathetic. People are like, why are you so mad? Because I need to hold on to that mad. When I'm mad, I get shit done. I'd rather be angry all the time than apathetic. Uh, you, I mean, you know, uh, I live. A, I'm, I, I'm thankful for my life. I have a happy life, you know. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, but I'm angry. I'm, I'm angry because I gotta be angry because yeah. I feel because I'm starting to feel. This is honestly how I'm starting to feel. If we're not angry, if we're not angry, nobody cares. Yeah. When we're good, when we're not talking, which is why I tell people I don't give a fuck about you being comfortable anymore. Yes. I gotta be angry. Because that's the only way you take me serious. Yeah, it's the that's only the time only... I get the responses. Exactly. That's the only time you are willing to be like, okay, she'll throw thrown out. But maybe she's got a point. Like, yeah. that, that is honestly how I mean, we, that's how look, we fight. That's where we are. Look, look at our timelines, for real. When we talk about social issues or when I, I break out economic stuff, crickets half the time. Yeah. Well, let me get mad and start talking about how I'm sick of white people blows up. (laughs) It is ridiculous. Let us talk about how the patriarchy is fucking up. Our timelines blow up. Anytime we're angry, we get responses. That's why I say people, be sad. We we have the right to mourn. We have the right to be sad because we're watching our democracy die. We're watching our economy be be completely destabilized. Putin got his chest moving. He picked the right mm-hmm. set of dummies as his pawns. So be sad, but don't become apathetic. Become angry. Anger yeah. is the only emotion right now that seems to be getting shit done. Yeah, you know, we we and I I want to stress that we love people and care about people but yeah. you know it seems like it just seems like that there's so many out of touch like that move yeah, lady oh I, I want I, we cannot end this cast before we talk about her just move pissed me off so badly I was I, I came off lunch break and I seen your tweets to her and I was like I went back up and I read everything she said she's like well if black people want you know to have better why don't they just move to my neighborhood and I'm like just move just move, don't stop me. My neighborhood is predominantly white, and I am constantly reminded that I'm black in this neighborhood. Even by yeah. the well-meaning ones who want to be my friend, they have to remind me that I'm the different one. Okay? Yeah. So just move, don't work. Then you've got people like Chip, Mr. Loan Officer Extraordinaire, who can spam on Twitter nasty racial stuff at women of color and men of color. Because he thinks he can get away with it and his bosses don't care that approve or disapprove loans for people of color. So just move yeah. is not an answer to systemic racism, lady. Just just so you know, just to clarify, he told us that he approved he uh does not approve loans. He he openly yeah. told us that she's like yeah. with without with pride. Any reservation or anything like that. He I mean, yeah, like you said, with pride told us that he denied loans. His ass crumbled so, when I wrote that very professional letter to his bosses though, because he tried exactly. the wrong black woman. <laughs> That's it, but I mean that just goes that just goes to show you how fucked up we are. Yeah. When people are at you know, it, 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 I just I'm sorry. It's, that that it's that just like story this. is just it pisses me off. The oh. social disconnect. It's like Bernie Bros and Trump Christians, these people just think they're right about stuff because it works for them. It keeps them feeling all right. So then it must be okay for everybody else. Just live in the suburbs like me. You won't be reminded that you're black every fucking five minutes, which is not true. Especially when you have like neighborhood gatherings. Like they, I used to go to this 4th of July thing all the time. And then I finally was like, this isn't for me. These people talk yeah. about shit I don't care about. They constantly reminded me, oh, you're the black friend. I, it felt disingenuous. I don't want to fuck with these people. So, no, no I, I don't. Happening. Yeah. Because yeah. I just, know that feeling. I know that, that, token, that tokenism. Yeah. That, 
and people experience. It's it's a waste of time. I mean, and it and it is. It's tiresome. Yeah. It's so very tiresome to play that game. Like, and then you know, white that's, people that's are feeling the up. spotlight of their fuck ups now and trying to play the victim. You can't do that because we have to live with being called a monolith. I constantly yeah. hear about the fuck ups black people do, and I don't try to deny that black people do fuck ups. That's the difference between me and white people. And I say that you can get mad at me. It's the difference between me and most white people is I know that there are black people that fuck up. I don't own those people, though. But you expect that out of me. You know, one of y'all motherfuckers will go shoot up a church and nobody, everybody's like, not all white people. Get the fuck out of my face with that not allism. If I'm expected yeah. to own black on black crime, you should own every domestic terrorist. You should own every freaking David Koresh. You should own every Timothy McVeigh. You should own every Donald fucking Trump. Because that's my life. Had Barack Obama been a fuck up instead of somebody that really tried to elevate this country, you'd be all over black people. That's your president. Now everybody's like, oh, we miss Obama. You didn't fucking appreciate him when you had it for eight years. <laughs> Thank you. I've seen so many tweets from people saying how sorry they they did not appreciate him. Yeah. And I just think it's such it's such a I and I, I don't know if I told you this before, but um when Trump announced his run for presidency, I told my mama right then, I told her sitting on the couch, I'll never forget this, and if you ask her she'll tell you. I turned around to her and said, That man is gonna win. And she was like, why? I said, because people, I said, more people are, people are more pissed off that we have a black president than they are about the shit that's happening in this country. Exactly. And she was like, she she looked at me and she was like, you know, she was like, I, I can't believe that. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm praying. And I was like, mom, I'm telling you. It was like, yeah. mark my words. Say, that man will be president. And I fought hard. Against yeah. it. I fought hard and long. And I, you know, I cuss people out for not going to vote. I, yeah. I did it all. I Stood out at 6 a.m. to get my vote in. And when well, they had yeah. the ballot issues at our at our um, station, I called. Because I was like, yeah. you're going to count my ballot. I yeah. want to know why that machine, which was the first of the morning, all of a sudden had a ballot counting issue. Yeah. And I stayed I, on that shit. But I, told, I told her, I was like, this man is going to win. And I was yeah. like, I'm telling you. I was like, I see it now. I see it, and I told him, like, it, it, it's not going to have anything to do. I was like, people are going to tell you it's about economic issues. People are going to tell you it's about the economy. But I, I told him, I was like, the economy is finally moving. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what people thought was going to happen. He was going to bail out the economy. He was going to take us out of the recession, and then all of a sudden, the world was going to renew itself. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how they got to that point, but whatever. But I told I, I knew then, I knew then, I was looking at the way society was, the way that we react to each other, and how little we give a fuck about people. Yeah. And that told me then, everything about Donald Trump was what people wanted it to be. Yeah. Nobody, people who say that he was going to change are full of shit. Yeah. You knew what he was. You knew what he was before. And I had, I, I, just to tell you how funny it is, is that, and how disconnected from society and all these issues we are, was having a conversation with the coworker, and he's, he, um, he's a Republican, and he told me he voted for Trump. Oh. And he asked me, he asked me, why do black people, he said, he said, I understand why some white people don't like him or don't trust him. He said, but why do people of color and particularly black people not like Trump. And I said, okay. So I was like, move. Yeah. I told I told him I was like, I Googled Central Park five for him. And I lived in New York when the shit happened. And I told him, I was like, this isn't the beginning. I was like, but this is the shit that gives us has us remembering him. I was like, we've always known that he was full of shit, yeah. that he was a racist <clears throat> and a cheat and a liar and a stealer yeah. and a grifter. We already knew that. Yeah. We I, knew that. I wish we he would that. ask me around because I'm telling you, I lived when my grandfather told me about stories about Fred Trump. 
My grandfather was a businessman in New York. He knew how the Trumps rolled. He knew about the C on the applications for people who tried to get into their building. He knew they were nothing but fucking slumlords, too. But nobody wants to talk what about that. Yeah, and what got me, Tim, he was so shocked. Yeah. I was like, you didn't even know this, did you? Didn't want to know. He was know. like, no. And I, told, I, and I just went through and I, I told him, I was like, just go. I said, skip all the bullshit. I was like, go. You got you got to go a few pages down. Because I know he's made plenty of fucking news in the past year. So you got to travel a little bit further down to Google uh, Yellow Brick Road to find all of the shit that he's guilty of before he came and fucked up uh, America even more by mm-hmm. being his president. I said, but there has always been in the black community a sense that Donald Trump was full of shit. Yeah. I knew Donald, I'm, I'm 30, I'm 10 years younger than you. I knew Donald Trump was bullshit when I was in fucking uh, middle school. Yes. I knew that. My mom told me. She, I remember her telling me about the Central Park Five. I remember that conversation because I could not believe it. And of course, we didn't have the internet the way we have it now. But I, I, I went and I read up on it, and, and she showed me the newspaper clips. I mean, all the way down here in Texas, yep. they were talking about that shit. Yep. And I, I knew that. I knew Donald Trump was full of shit. Every time, every time, anytime. I didn't watch. Apprentice. No, nope. I boycotted the apprentice because it's just him being a bully. That I did not, that I don't, that I don't fuck with Trump now. I don't like him. Hmm. He's full of shit. And anybody who takes the time to actually look at him, watch him, and truly listen to what he's saying, because like I told people today, it's all your fault. This shit is happening. Yeah, all of this shit is happening. It is your fault. Don't blame Republicans because Republicans told you what they were going to do. Donald Trump told you what he was going to do. Dude it was is, your fault. Dude Go was ahead. a constant with his fuckery. Talking about putting uh, numbers on Muslims. Talking about uh, just what he wants to do to women. What he has done to women. The way he mocks Serge Kovaleski, the handicapped reporter. Even if he didn't insult black people on the regular, which he did, with his, I don't want black people counting my, my money. I, I want the guys with the yarmulkes. Like, black people can't count money. I made my fucking living counting people's money. <laughs> but he, this is shit out of his own mouth. And even if he didn't constantly insult people of color, telling us we live in war zones when I live in the motherfucking suburbs, even if he wasn't a constant reminder that he only sees us as stereotypes, he has insulted a faith, he has insulted Mexican people, he's insulted women, and I don't like that shit. I don't like bullies. I've said it several times. I don't like bullies. So for anybody to ask, what do people of color have against Donald Trump? My counter question to you is, why don't you have an issue? Yes, because he's not even what should be represented on Republican values, even though now that we see how the Republicans act, he is very indicative of Republican values. That's why I say, fuck your conservative values. If that's what conservative values is, pedophilia, corruption, greed, pandering to Putin, y'all can have it. I'll keep my liberal standard. Yeah, I will too. Fuck y'all. I will will be a part of leader and whatever the fuck you want to call me. Yep. I, I, I'll be a lip talk whatever you is. As long as I don't have to be associated with fucking uh, uh, the fucking evil, like, and I, I really, really, really do not like evangelicals right now. Nope. I mean, I, I haven't liked them for a long time. But if I don't have to be associated with that shit, I don't have to be associated with bigots and racists who are now running our country. If I don't, if I don't have to be associated with any type of fuckery that we are experiencing, I will take it. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Like, and I don't want to be in that. Let I me just be in that. add this, because the tax scam put in a leniency towards the um, uh, religious people getting more involved in politics. If your yeah. asses is taxes, then you don't get a say in politics. 
start paying them taxes with your tithes, and then we can talk. If you're at your pulpit right now, you ain't paying taxes, and you're trying to influence politics, fuck you. I don't care yeah. if it's sacrilege to you. I don't care if it's disrespect, because true respect comes from, I even pay taxes. I'm an independent person. I shouldn't have to pay taxes because of my disability, but I pay taxes on everything I earn because I feel it's right, because I know it goes to school, because I know it goes back to my community. Yet these fuckers will tap a Bible, not pay their taxes and think, oh, they can have their hands in the political game with money that they should be paying in the taxes? No, yeah. it's not right. And I just, I, I, the separate, I, I honestly feel like it, it and even, even as a Christian, and I'll say this, and I've, I've caught black for this before, but there needs to be a separation between church and state. Yes. They do not mix. They don't mix. If you're going to have a so-called uh, republic, if you're going to have a democratic republic or democracy or whatever the fuck you want to call it, we are right now. Yeah. Religion is not going to work. It's not going to work in there. Yeah. Because people, religious, <clears throat> religion is more personal than politics. Yes. And religion tends to take over everything in your life. If you allow it to, and people will say it should and it does affect you, but if you allow your religion to take over all of your ideology and everything that you do, it becomes toxic. It's it does bit. not work. It's supposed to be a personal path, not a way to close yeah. your mind and learn new things. And too many people use religion and as that. Yes, and to oppress people, you would think after the Crusades and every other generation in history has shown you what people ruling from the point of a religious standpoint has done to that that community, that time period, all of it. It all goes back to that. Yeah. I can't, I don't want my religion in my politics. I nope. don't. I don't want it. I want that to stay separate yeah. because... I, you have to be objective <coughs> in yep. your politics. Yeah. You know, yes, I'm a Democrat, I, I'm a liberal, and all of that good stuff, and there are Republicans and conservatives and all that stuff, but you need to be able to be objective without all of that getting in your way. Yes. Because you're going to, you, you will automatically stick to your guns quicker. Like, the these more, people who argue with us about being a liberal means you kill babies, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to start blowing up some fucking conservatives that I know around here who talk about how much they love the Bible, but who have had abortion. They act like yeah. abortions is strictly a liberal thing. Yeah, I mean, and, but they treat everything like that. Like, yeah. you got more and more talking about you know, trans people getting who don't have rights. Like, what? Yeah. What? The only reason you're saying that is because you know that it plays to a certain crowd of people. Yeah. And look, you don't have to agree with what a transgender person may do. You don't have to agree with what a gay or a queer person may do. You don't have to agree with the non-binary. You don't have to agree with me being black. You don't have to agree with me being a woman. You don't have to agree with you having a child with autism. You don't have to agree with anything that I do. What you have to do is respect me and stay the fuck out of my house. Yep. Stay out of my house. Exactly. If you want to be in politics, you want to be in government, you do what is supposed to help me, but stay out of my shit. That's why you don't, you don't get to yeah. run that. Exactly. You don't get to run that. That's why I'm so proud of the way North Carolina, I, I'm upset that Burr got the office now because of his tax scam, but we got rid of Pat McCrory as our governor because he pushed that HB2 bill. Not only did it hurt North Carolina financially because big businesses pulled out, we lost the yeah. NBA All-Star, we lost a lot of yeah. revenue from stars yeah. who went before me because they would push a phantom boogeyman, transgender person, predatorizing on kids, and then ignore people like Roy Moore. And North Carolina said, no, enough of this bias. And that's yeah. why we have um, Roy Cooper. Is it Pat Cooper, or Cooper. It, it, it's, it's a Cooper who's running our government right now. I'm kind of blanking on his name, and I'm sorry about that, but I did vote for you, Mr. Cooper, and I'm glad. And he's working hard, despite the NCGOP, to get rid of HB2 completely. And he's had to make That's some concessions. Good. That has made me a bit mad, but he's he knows what he has to fight. 
you yeah. know? And at least he's and trying. That, that's what government is. It's a it's a push and pull. You gotta you gotta work with people. You gotta yes. be able to listen. But that that's where we are right now. Like you know, religion has and and I've I've tweet I've tweeted it a thousand one times. But Barry Goldwater, even with his racist ass, he knew he saw it coming. Mm-hmm. You cannot negotiate with freaking people who are so caught up in their religion that they can't do anything else. You cannot reason yep. with a religious conservative. You can't. No. You can't do it. It is not possible. I wish people would stop trying to. And I would wish people would stop telling me and everyone else to try to do yeah. it. Because it's not going to work. It don't work. When you, when you are that hell-bent on being something and believing something, there is nothing in this world that will change. Yep. At all. Nothing. And that is how the religious right works. Everything to them, is a, it, it is what it is. It does it's not, set it does in stone. What you say. Yep. Exactly. exactly. That's why and I did that meme yesterday. Primitive. That yeah. American flag fascism came wrapped in the uh, flag and tapped in the Bible to take from that famous quote. Because that's exactly how we got to today. We got yeah. here because people were teaching from their pulpit that opposite of what jesus stood for he yeah. was against judging others he was against shunning the poor he was against not taking care of the sick yet people if you ask them for right wing they justify their hatred and bigotry their hate for the poor as as being good christians it's like you don't know your religion no you don't and it's just it's it's it makes me angry because yeah. you know it just it just Gives me it just it takes bad something place. so good, something that should be a yeah. good way for people to live without that fear of death. Because somebody asked me on Twitter, why do you think it's so easy for the religious to be manipulated? It's because religion in its whole was based on the fear of the unknown. To explain exactly. things that human minds could not process. And I'm not saying that to take and say that religion isn't true and that God isn't true. I just don't know. I don't have yeah. direct proof. I believe what I believe because it feels right for me to believe and I'm real enough to say that. And and the problem is fear can be exploited. So they take people who fearfully believe in God and they say well your God wouldn't like these people in their wicked ways. Who are they to speak for God? Yeah. And the last time I checked and I would like to remind people that when you, the Bible says when you get to heaven God is not going, he's not, not going to be worried about other people. He's going to ask you what you did with your life. Yeah. What did you do? Who did you give to? Who did you take care of? Did you watch out for your fellow man? Did you discriminate against? They're not, it's about what you do. So, once again, you cannot legislate the morality of anyone else. You can't tell me that it's wrong to be gay just because you feel that it's wrong to be gay. Just because that is how you want to interpret the Bible. I understand it's in the Bible. But understand this. That is how people are living. That is the life that they choose to live. That is how they And were they've born, been and this way throughout the history of get, being gay was so wrong. Do you think that if a person has a choice between being gay and, and being accepted society wise, as much as humans crave that acceptance, they would choose that? Thank you. That goes for every. That goes for everything across yeah. the spectrum. If you honor, like, like when you ask, <laughs> when you ask white people if they want to be black, yeah. I have yet to meet a white person that has who has said only yes, one that Rachel Dolan's a crazy ass lady. Only yeah. her. And you right. can't tell that she because she ain't black. In my personal life, I no. have not met anyone exactly. <laughs> that they want to do that but the point is is that everybody wants to be accepted yeah you don't you don't want to you don't want to be black because you realize that there is an issue with our acceptance you understand that there is something going on and you realize that you don't get the same privilege when you are a different color you don't get the same freedom that you get when you are a different color you're not looked at the same way that you are when you're a different color yeah. so don't tell me about fucking acceptance don't tell me about what i have to do when you can't even admit to yourself that you are scared of that yep. you're scared of that 
but you know the consequences of it. So why would you set the world up in a way where people have to be afraid of that? Exactly. People have to fear being in their own skin. And that's what we've done. Yeah. That's what the religious right has done. In exactly. my opinion, they've made people scared. They, they do. They, and they, they traffic in fear. That's yep. exactly what they do. They that's exactly. In fear. It's like my friend Helen said. She goes under the name Justice on Twitter. They have sold spiritual meth to people. And I love that term. Yeah. I, girl, thank you for that term. I'm going to be using that term because it's true. It's spiritual meth. They can't get enough of it because it makes them feel good about their hatred. It makes them feel good about justifying their fears. It makes them feel good for not stepping outside their box. You notice that people who actually travel outside this country, outside their own freaking neighborhoods, are more open to learning than yeah. these people who stay in their little small towns and won't think. Yeah. And, I, you know, you find it you find it in rural areas more than you do in cities. And, yeah. You know, I, I understand that location and, and situations uh, have forced people to be and to live where, you know, people have become homogeneous in where they stay. But the world is not just what you see. Yeah. It's not. And it's I'm not what you see. So I'm many at four if, walls, but that ain't the rest of the world. Exactly, <laughs> and that mentality it leaks everywhere. Like I see so many writers who jump on the whole, well, literary is not for diversity kick because they grew up in small towns and they think people only want to read about their stuff. Um, and not Anne Rice. I don't want to slander Anne Rice. She's been cool about that. Um, what's her name? Tamora Pierce has done it. She wrote a lot of stories that I, I read when I was younger about women empowerment and night city. I thought she was woke because a lot of her stories feature strong women. But she burst out of her mouth talking about, you know, diversity doesn't really sell books. And it's like, who are you? And it's the same with like Hollywood. You know, they, they all say that to sell movies and have blockbusters, you have to have that familiar white face. That's why they took movies like, they took property like Avatar, The Last Airbender, which was set in Asia, which had all Asian characters, and made it about little white kids. And it's like, you got to stop doing this. you got to stop telling other cultures that they can't sell tickets to a movie theater. You can't yeah. tell actors that because their skin tone or because their ethnic background is different, they don't have the range. You're not even going to give them a chance. And that's exactly. why I'm doing my best to get writing people who want to be writers to stand up and write. Just do it. Because there's too yeah. many people telling people of color that we can't write from our perspective, that it won't sell. And we've got and to rise will. above that. It will. There are people looking there's for a, this. There's a market. Yeah, people, and I also like to remind people, look, the country voted for Hillary. The popular vote, which means that we all got our asses up, we voted for Hillary. Yep. Which means we voted for progression. We vote, this country is more liberal than we like to admit, and this country is more liberal than the news and the current situation leads you to believe. But... We have to capitalize on that. We got to capitalize on the fact that we know that even generationally, there are people who still see how diversity is good. There are people who realize that all of these things, everything about us makes us awesome. And like yeah. I said, like you were saying, in, in media, in the industry, you know, they're fine. we're finally starting to see black faces. We're finally starting to see Hispanic faces. And, you know, they're... They need to do better about Asian culture. I yes, they do. They really they do. do. They need to stop taking movies that, like you said, were set in Asia or that uh, depict predominantly uh, Asian cast and making them white. Like, they, they have to stop doing that. Exactly. It, it's not okay. It is. But, um, yeah, I mean, but, but that's our world. We're a, di we're a diverse place. We, are, we should be celebrating that we should make that that should be our next thing we need to keep pushing diversity yes i don't i don't care if you feel like you know it may be identity politics to say that i'm pro-black well yeah i am because you're not gonna say it yeah you're not gonna say it and that uh, not we are black diversity. yeah and uh. that doesn't mean that i don't want to see other people succeed i want to see transgender people succeed. I want to see gay people succeed. Yeah. I want to see Muslims succeed. I and Mexicans. See, I want to see everybody succeed. 
like yeah. I said, when we, when, when I honestly believe that when black people went to the back, when we got out there and we started saying, no, this shit ain't gonna work, we not for this, you're gonna have to do better. Everybody won. Because the Civil Rights Act, it covers everybody, disabled people, yeah. titled, <laughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. people from other countries who speak other languages. The only reason that we have translations in other languages is because of the Civil Rights Act. Yeah. It gave so many people an opening to this country. Why the fuck are we not focusing the on The LGBT platform was raised off the Civil Rights Movement. Thank you. It all was. Yeah. It all was. Feminism. The beginning of feminism. Piggyback. All the civil rights. Like, all of that comes from that. We need to be focusing on We need to bring that back to the yeah. forefront. Because this is humanity, people. Yes. We're, we're killing ourselves. We are. We are. This is killing all ourselves. self-inflicted. I'm telling you, this is why we fight. And if you have listened to this entire cast, the men dropped the ball. We had this stuff. Yeah. We we had this. We didn't need y'all, and you keep it up. It's just gonna be us running this shit. But yeah. for real, if, if if you listen to us, go on. You hear our passion. You gotta realize that. Yeah, we might come out against certain white people. We don't have to say not all white people because we understand that that should be that should be there in your mind already. But we care about all people. And we don't want to make special snowflakes out of people. We want everybody to feel like they can sit at the table. I don't know how many times I got to keep saying that. Yeah, I mean, I told, that matter of fact, that just brings up something. Uh, Khalid Kuali was going at it with this uh, one, one white guy who was saying, you know, um, who once again was trying to explain blackness to a black man. Yeah, I but, can't. Um, he goes on and says, you know, so that was the base of the conversation, but this made me comment when he said that so so you're saying white people don't have a seat at the table when discussing uh, racism. I said, no. I said, it's not that you don't have a seat at the table. It's that you try to take that motherfucker over. Yeah. That's the problem. You got to, you, if you gonna, if you want a seat at the table when black people are talking, when Asian people are talking, when uh, Middle Eastern people are talking. If you want a seat at that table, you need to shut up yeah. and listen. And you need to take what they say seriously and then give them an opinion. Think thoughtfully. Listen to what, listen to that. Listen to the, that diverse language because there's so much that you are missing. And it's not that you don't, and not that your opinion doesn't matter, but it's just me saying, for fuck's sake, allow my opinion to matter. Yeah. Allow that shit to be, allow that shit to be okay. Allow it to be okay for me to say I am not feeling this shit. Yep. And you know what? This shit has been happening a lot. I'm not the only one who feels like this. So I need you to figure out a way to do better. Y'all expect us to do better. So we're going to expect that from you. Everybody needs to start being accountable. Yeah. We all have to hold each other to the same note of accountability that we hold other people exactly. we cannot, I cannot allow I can't allow my brother and sister my black brother and sister to do fuckery and say it's okay I can't do that because nope. that right there that's a lot that's giving them an excuse what I can do is tell them yeah I know you fucked up but you know you can do better you yep. know you can live right you know you can do this and I'm gonna do what I can to help you I'm gonna lift you up yep. but I gotta say same thing to a white person I gotta say the same thing to an Asian person I can't I can't differentiate between those two so when you tell me that your opinion matters more than mine because of what you look like exactly no, it's not gonna happen so you have a seat at the table. You really do. You Just check your table. privilege at the damn door. When you come to sit Thank down you. to break bread, check that fucking privilege at the door because we don't need it. We didn't ask for it. And we're going to toss your ass out when you bring it. Yeah. So, it's like so, the, 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 the cold slaw that you make when we know your house is dirty. We don't want that at the table. <laughs> so don't bring it. We don't want it. <laughs> for real. That about that pop <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. Ugh. 
This is why we don't do potlucks, people. We know, we know about your house. You be telling us your habits at the water cooler, and then be bringing food, and it's like, nah, sorry, we ain't doing that, you know. And, and that's how life is. We want y'all at the table, but you got to check that privilege at the door. You got to stop acting like you the end all be all for you don't speak for all the races. I know society has told you that, you know, when you do benevolence, that you're like the, the, the reason why shit gets done. But no, we are the ones together putting in that blood, sweat and tears. And we can articulate our feelings without your voice. Yeah. So stop really acting like we need you. Stop acting like you want to be wanted, but don't act like we need you because we got this shit without you. Yeah, I mean, and, and I will always say this. I will always say, you know, because that's one thing I can say. We can run this country without you. We don't need you. You don't real. Actually, honestly, that's not even economically sound. Yep. I don't know a lot of bad stuff like that, but I know that in order for people in America to make it, that codependence on every race and every part of society is a necessity. Because we built that, this country. Whole, they don't yeah. need us. We <laughs> built this country. I'm going to be real on that. I don't care if people get offended. We got the receipts, folks. That's true. Even in your disgustingly true. whitewashed history books, we have the receipts. Who built this country? Who you took yeah. this country from? Who owned the land originally, people? Come yeah. on now. Yeah. You, you don't need us. No, no. If we're going to play the who don't need who, that's why they're afraid. Because they realize that people are starting to go, well, why do we really need these fuckers? Yeah, why, and, do, we need, why do we need to live under white supremacy? Like yes. that, that, I think that that's the question that everybody's starting to And ask. I think why they're fearing it instead of saying, hey, this is what we bring positive to the table. Because white people do bring their own positive. They're so yeah. afraid that they don't bring enough positive, which some of them don't, let's say. Because we all have fuck-ups. Every ethnic background has their fuck-ups that just, you know they're useless motherfuckers. We all have our Uncle Ray Ray's. <laughs> Our cousins, Jojos, and all the rest of them that don't do shit, ain't gonna do shit, and ain't gonna be shit. Yeah. But instead of realizing that we don't condone, we don't put you that on y'all, all of y'all, and just bring what you can bring, they would rather make us feel like we can't bring shit so they can uh, minimize their mediocrity. And we're fed up with that. Yeah, it's just like you telling me fucking move. Yeah. Well, bitch, if I do you not think that I tried that shit? How about y'all move into bad neighborhoods without taking it over and get rid of people of color and help yeah. it elevate those neighborhoods, Miss Move? <laughs> I mean, it works both ways. It does. It does. And when you're gonna, if you're gonna tell somebody to move, like, like I'm expecting you, if you tell me to move, then I'm, I'm gonna expect you to have all my expenses and shit, because obviously that, that's the only way that you just can tell me just move and think that the world is gonna get better you yeah. have to have you gotta have a plan. it's just That's like them bernie people who say yeah. if we fight classism everything else will fall into place i said what about black people with money would still treat it like shit yeah because money don't stop racism money does not stop racism it money don't. don't stop any kind of prejudice no it doesn't, it doesn't. matter of fact it almost makes prejudice worse yeah so you know because then not only are you discriminating against people of color, but now you got funky faces for the poor. Like it, it's all it, it all rolls together. You can't kill one beast without killing. It's a multi-headed beast. It's a hydra. It has a, a shitload of heads. You yep. gotta take. We have to take and cut it off at the neck. All of it has. Yeah, to go. and, and we, we have to treat to all these issues equally. Racism, homophobia, misogyny, classism. All of that got to be tackled with the same amount of energy. And you can't go telling people that one issue is more important than the other. Because when you dismiss another person's life, this is our lives we're fighting for. This is no yeah. joke. When I hear trans talking about how she just lost somebody who hung themselves because they couldn't take it anymore. 
the harassment. When I hear about how a transgender black woman was killed by a guy who's not even going to get a manslaughter charge because they could plead the panic defense. This is our lives, people. This is our lives. And you see my child. He is 12. I love that boy with a fly with my beard. I'm afraid to let him play outside with certain toys because this is our lives. Yeah. And, and, and I want to, people who have stuck it out to the end of this cast to realize that this is our life. So when you, as an ally, try to say, don't make it about, you're canceling what it's about. And you got to yeah. stop doing that. You do. You do. And we got to, we, we really do. We really got to start. Empathy. Yeah. Shit. We got to have empathy and we have to elevate. We got to, we got to talk about these issues. Yeah. And, you know, people... People have to get out their feelings yep. and accept that criticism, you know. And, and I mean, take shit. the name calling, because I, I get called a, a social justice warrior all the time. I like warriors. I play fantasy adventure games. Yeah. Warriors kick ass. So, yeah. Call me a SJW. I would rather be a warrior than a lazy motherfucker letting this shit happen. Exactly. I, that's, that's how I feel. Yep. I would rather, I'd rather take my hit. I'd rather for you to call me. Nigga, I'd rather for you to call me. Bitch, I'd rather for you to do all of that. Because at least I know that I am out there and you are pissed off. Whatever yep. I'm doing has you mad. So that means I'm doing something right. So I know I'm doing right me. by the amount of haters versus the amount of admirers. I say that all the time because I'm getting exactly. shit done. And if you want to hate on me and you want to call me all that shit, know that you're going to receive something back. But if that's how low you got to stupid, it, we can't talk. If we can't communicate, then I, I have nothing else for you. So fine. We'll yeah. argue. We'll go back and forth. But at the end of the day, people, we need to, we got to find, we got to find a better way to do this shit. Yeah. Racism is real. And telling people that the shit isn't real is not going to make anything better. It's no, not. It and isn't. telling us, telling us fixing classism, which I had not heard that before today, but I am going to go read up on that back and slap work. Said it, but reading saying classism will fix the world is is for shit as well. The best so, stretch know. for that is Brave Net because they come at her with that bullshit all the time. And Amenji, I don't want to say her name wrong. A M E N G E. She is really good with shutting people down with that shit because they try us. They see black yeah. women of color who show intelligence, and these Bernie Bros will come out the woodwork like cockroaches, which the White House is affected with. But they come out the woodwork with that, oh, you know, if you just focus on economic anxiety, everything will fall into place. It's like, no, I ain't got time for economic anxiety. I have the very real anxiety that the cop can kill my kid and get off. And, and then on top of that, it should also be noted that not, it, it really should be noted that every Democrat, every Democrat does not experience economic anxiety yes. in the same manner, which means that just attacking that that alone will not cut it. You and we don't all feel this. We feel economic anxiety, but we don't feel it in the same areas. So yeah. you can't just tell me classism is gonna fix every fucking thing. No, it's not. Nope. Because I gotta deal with I gotta deal with the shit. Not only I gotta deal with classism, but I gotta deal with the racism that comes along with And classism. misogyny. So, we got yeah, the triple shit. Yeah, so don't that that ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. We gotta figure out how to fix all of it. Like I said, cut the entire head off. Exactly. Cut off. Just cut it off and, and really be ready to fight. And that's why I said, I, I, you know, we're going to get ready to wrap it up. But in closing, if you consider yourself an ally, because I'm tired of people who declare themselves an ally, show me. Don't tell me. Show me. But if you consider yourself an ally enough to really try to stand with us, you've got to be willing to fight everything. Because I'm done yeah. with selective allies. I'm done with people who say I understand BLM, but then don't want to talk about gay rights. Don't want to talk about transgender yeah. rights. Don't want to talk about how Latinos are, are, are being targeted or how natives are being targeted or how women are being disrespected. If you're not for human rights, then get the fuck away from me because you're in my way. Yeah. That's real. That is real. Yeah. I'm, 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 I don't want to I don't want to exclude anybody because I don't, I don't, I know what it feels like yeah. to be excluded.
me. Yeah. That shit ain't fun. Exactly. So I'm not I'm not trying to do that to anybody in this fight for justice. I'm not trying to do that to get for anybody. And like I said, check go check the work, man. Check the work. Man. When we come together, like get shit done. We do. When we when we this when we decide that you know this shit ain't working no more, stuff happens. Yep. People, we we got like I said, stay mad, stay angry. Stay pissed off at what's going on in this world because that's the only way that it's going to change. The more angrier we get, the more they start to feel us. That we the people shit, I was thinking about it and I was thinking, you know, how how little how little respect I have for America, the idea of America. Now I was thinking about that. But then I started thinking, and like I said, after I had this conversation <clears throat> with my coworker, I even told you, I was like, you know what? We don't agree on damn near everything. But he's reasonable. I can deal with reasonable. Yes. I can change the world. We can change the world reasonable. Yep. You know, we don't, I, you don't have to hold my beliefs. But it's when y'all start getting into that whole, you know, this is all I'm going to focus on. This is all I'm going to be for. I can't be for anything else. Everything else is wrong. I, because I don't believe. It doesn't mean that it happened. All of, like all of that. When you get into that, that territory, that's when I stop dealing with you. That's when I'm like, not nah, fuck it, because exactly. it ain't worth it. Exactly. So we gonna we gonna continue to rep for everybody, and we gonna continue to tell y'all how we be fucking up. Yep. And you know, if you have criticism or anything for any of us, bring it. I realize, yeah, I realize you're not gonna like me. I realize that and just make sure you have a good enough reason for why you don't like me. Yeah, I, I'll give you <laughs> plenty of reason. We both, we, we can give you plenty of reason not to like us. But if you just coming off because you see a black face in our Abby or, or you know that we're black women and that that's your reason not to like us without giving weight to what we say, without taking the fact that we stand up for everybody, then fuck y'all, you're going to get the ire. You don't deserve to get that balanced person that tries to give people that equal footing. If you prove to me that you can only hate on me because of your preconceived notion without me giving you reason, because I've given people reason to hate me, I'm not going to act like I haven't. Me too. Yeah, me too. But if I don't give you that reason and you just come at me with that hate, well, you're going to get it back. You get what you yeah. receive with me. Yeah, you're going to catch the asshole. Yeah. Catch the asshole. I I typically get along with people. I don't yeah. have any problems with people. It's when it's when you start fucking with me that I have issues. Yeah. And that's how I feel about the world today. Y'all were fucking with me. Exactly. So yeah, I'm mad. Yep. <laughs> Stay I'm mad. mad. That's that's my thing. You know, Book yeah. Dragon, he made this banner. I'm gonna change my Twitter profile with it because he said, you, you know, now is not the time for Twitter, now's the time for action. Because yeah. we have too many hashtag activists. And I love Twitter for like I said last week. Socialization, grouping up, providing information, and getting those resistance marches out there. But it can't be your only path to this. And if yeah. it is, you wasting our time. Yeah, you, you know? are. And a note: um, get your ass out there and register to vote. Yes, and right register. Now. And like Pam, my friend Pam, she's out there. She checks on seniors because a lot of states have where you can do your ballots at home for the disabled yeah. and for the seniors, just go check on your neighbor. Make sure that they, they can see their ballot. Make sure that you're helping them. You don't have to fill it out for them. I know there's a fine line between what people consider help, but check in on that. There's little things that people do. I, I gave her all props because I didn't even think about that until she said Me either. That's you know? a good idea. Yes. There are ways yeah. we can really work together to take back our system, but people have to be willing to do it. I mean, and you know what? This is our chance to show these stupid voter fraud commissions and all these people who are suppressing the vote. I mean, you, we got to get out there and we got to sign up and we got to get our asses up and go vote. Yes. I don't want to hear anybody talking shit if you did not get up and go vote. Exactly. So get your ass out right now while you have plenty of time. It's not even 2018 yet. But in the midst of everything going on, get your ass out there and make sure you register to vote. And when you register to vote, take 10 people with you. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And you know what? I'm not even saying that for just 
liberals and Democrats, everybody. Yeah. Because everybody should be voting. Because even if you're a Republican and you see that this shit is wrong, you need to make sure that you're voting. If you're a libertarian and you don't agree with this shit, make sure you're voting. This yeah. protest not voting, these protest votes are not voting at all, they ain't gonna cut it. Nope. 2018, you gotta get your ass out. Yeah. Because they're gonna destroy us if you don't, so get yourself together. Yeah, and with this tax plan like that today, this whole, you know, Twitter is a, is lit up on both, you know, not really conservative side. I, no, they've been conspicuously yeah. quiet lately because they know. Yeah. They know. They, they peddling their conspiracy theories and shit like that. But, but you know, they ain't directly. I have not had a direct challenge on the tax plan except for one bro, and I shut his ass down. I was like, you know, I'm not even dealing with you today. Yeah, but if there's anything that should make people want to get their ass up and go vote, it's this tax bill. Yep. Honestly. I don't want to, like, after seeing what this is going to do, after I, after the red, the tweet that I read you, if you heard that, you heard that, and you were not moved to get your ass up and go vote so we can get these horrible people out of office who no longer give a shit about us, get them out. Like my, I have it on my Twitter. Like I have it on my Twitter. Women of every color need to get out and vote. Yes. Everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. Transgender, gay, cisgender, all of you. Get your ass out and vote. You, we've seen, we've seen and that. And not just vote. Person Run. Yes. Yeah. Run. Yes. Run. Now, people have asked me to run for office. I consider it, but with my mental health issues, I have always been up front. I can't handle that much stress. I'm not yeah. about to have a nervous breakdown for this country. Ain't happening. Yeah. I've had three. Yeah. I ain't going to do four for some ungrateful motherfuckers. No, ain't happening. <laughs> yeah. But I will help yeah. with campaigns. I will help with anything I can to get somebody who I feel will reflect the voice of all of us elected. Yes. I and wish I, I had the mental stability to run. I do. I teeter back and forth on it. But I know what I can handle stress-wise. And I don't feel this country deserves the, me to put my all into it and risk my mental health so that people get benefits that they don't even appreciate. No, nope, ain't happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. with that note, we will wrap it up. Yup. This was a great oh, cast. It was. Yeah. Yes, and like girl. I said, Ooh. I'm so glad that we are back doing this and we're going to try to do it every weekend if we can. And we will take breaks because we're human. We have lives. We have shit we have to do. But we want to keep the Greg's calling. We have to keep the the um. We have to keep this dialogue open because too many people don't know. We want to put you in the know. Yeah, and oh. we want everyone to just take a moment to give a fuck. Just if if it's just one moment a day, just care. Yeah, just, just that's care. all I'm asking for. You just care. I don't care. I, Make it, make it something positive. I don't care what it is positive that you care about, but care about it and do something about it. Exactly. That's all I'm asking. That's all, exactly. But we're going to wrap this up. And, and once again, girl, thank you. We handled this. Like I said, these brothers keep playing with us. We run this shit without y'all. Yeah, boy. You, you bad. Yeah. You're so bad. I'm not going to tell you you fucked up because I love you, but you bad. Yeah. Bad. But we enjoyed this. We, we, we did it, you know. Yeah. Like I said, and I will have this up on our YouTube channel, CCCSJW, as soon as I can. And, and once again, Pansa, like I said, I love you, girl. You know I that. Love you, too, you know. I love you. Exactly. Too. And I will talk to you soon. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. And we are going to wrap this cast up. Once again, this is. Uh, Kalari Gamer Chick, also known as Tanisa Walker. You know, you can follow us on Twitter, our handles. We talk about them all the time in the cast. And if you have any feedback, you want to leave comments, feel free. Um, just listen to us on our YouTube channel with CCCSJWS. I'm going to close out, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Um, not just wrapping up. Yeah, it was a good cast.